Good morning, everyone. It is a beautiful, overcast, unseasonably warm fall day here in North Georgia. Really, it's more like early winter at this point. We've had our first freeze. The majority of the snakes have started to head towards their brumation sites and are becoming harder to find. And warm days like today are becoming more and more scarce. So when they happen, we're going to be trying to take advantage of them as often as we can. So we're going to be hitting the field for most of the day today. It actually looks like we might have some rain coming in tonight. So I'm going to spend the day hiking around looking for snakes. And then if that rain ends up coming in, we might do some salamander hunting once it starts to get dark. So anyways, I'm going to hit it and I will let you guys know when I find my first herb of the day. Well, here's our first find of the day. I just flipped this nice northern red salamander under a board. Look at this guy. Very handsome little salamander. Great way to start out the day. These guys are always a welcome find. We typically see a lot of them during the winter. And we even see them pretty commonly at this particular spot too. So pretty cool. Good way to start the day. This is a fairly big red salamander. They get a bit bigger than that, but this is a pretty normal sized adult. Yeah, nice northern red salamander. I'm gonna put him back under his board. There's a very good chance we could end up seeing a couple of these guys today. They're one of my favorite salamanders to find, and I think they're one of the prettier ones we get in this area. So we'll put him back under his board and get back to it. Well, here's our first snake of the day in C2 under this log. Nice little ring neck. How's it going, buddy? That's encouraging. Good to see a snake. We haven't been out here too long, so that's a pretty fast start. Well, hopefully this little guy is an indicator that there will be a decent amount of snakes out today. But there's only one way to find out, so we're going to get back to it. Look at the habitat we're in today. Pretty typical forested hillsides. Lots of decent rocks to flip. Alright guys, here's our next find of the day. This is a little southern two-line salamander. It's a little bit windy out here today, unfortunately. I mean, there's some wonky audio. But yeah, pretty common. We see these guys a lot. Um, I actually don't know if I've ever seen them at this spot before. Kind of interesting. We're just on like a high, dry, burned ridge top right now. Not ideal habitat for these guys, so I'm gonna put him back under his little piece of wood and we're gonna get back to it. But nice little southern two line salamander. All right, next set of 10. I haven't seen anything under 10 yet today, but hopefully that'll change eventually. Not here though, it's very wet at the bottom. All right, guys, behind that little piece of bark right there was our next snake of the day. This is a nice little baby corn snake. If you recall, we saw one of these in the last episode, and I was exponentially more surprised by it because it was in my yard. But this area we're in today is actually one of the more common areas I see them, uh, particularly early and late in the year. Usually little babies like this. But yeah, that definitely makes the day for me if we don't see anything else. I'm glad we finally got something of interest. It's getting to be about... I think it's about one or two in the afternoon at this point, which this time of year is about as warm and as nice as it's gonna get. So I'm gonna take some photos of this guy real quick and then we're gonna get back to it. So I didn't notice when we first found this guy, but he actually has a meal in him. You can see he's a little bit distended right there. If you look at it from the belly, you can see there's a little lumpiness. So this guy is almost certainly trying to digest that meal before it starts getting too cold, which uh, it's been a pretty mild November so far. We've had a couple of cold overnights, but the daytime highs are getting plenty warm for this guy to digest. So I'm gonna let him get back to that, put him back under his little piece of wood, and we're gonna get back to it. Very nice little hatchling corn snake. I really love the ones here that have the kind of low orange on them. They almost look like a bicolored rat snake when they hatch out, but you can tell it's a corn because they've got a little bit of color there on the neck and that trademarked V shape on the head. You don't see that on hatchling rat snakes, so really cool. All right, there you go, brother. Stay safe out there. Good luck with your winter, your first winter, I'm assuming. This guy's real small. Very cool. This is actually right next to where that little corn was. That is a old black racer nest. You can tell those are racer eggs because they have a kind of granular texture to them. And that's really the only snake around here we see 
that has grainy eggs like that. Pretty cool though. Well, I feel a little bit better about the day now that we found that corn snake, but we still haven't found anything out basking, which is kind of surprising. Checking lots of nice looking stump holes like that in this nice habitat. But uh, I think like most stuff is undercover today, which is kind of surprising because it feels awesome out here. It's probably around 70 degrees and uh, partly cloudy, which is a perfect recipe for stuff to be basking. But we are here in North Georgia and it is late in the year, so we might just be kind of a little bit too late for prime hiking in this area this year. Either way, I'm gonna stick at it for a couple more hours and we'll see if we can turn up anything else. Well, that's corn number two for the day in C2. Oh, I'm gonna see if I can get him real quick. Very nice. Only a few feet away from the last one. Good stuff. Ooh, little grumpy guy. This one's quite a bit bigger than that last one. He's probably had a few more meals. He doesn't have a meal in him now, so I guess he's just thermoregulating. But yeah, second corn snake of the day. Very nice. He's being a little bit bitier than the first. <laughs> well, two corns and ring neck and a nice red salamander is not a bad day. But like I said, it's still relatively early in the day. It's kind of the heat of the day at this point. So I'm just going to let this guy go and we're going to get back to it. There you go, bud. Whoop. So remember earlier how I said red salamanders get quite a bit bigger? <laughs> I just flipped this purple beast under that log. All I saw when I first flipped this guy was his head sticking out, and I was like, what is that? I couldn't tell if it was a, like a, a weird looking spotted salamander or a mole salamander or what. And it wasn't until I had him in my hand that I knew what it was. Just a gigantic, old, uh, faded coloration red salamander. Really cool. So salamanders can live a surprisingly long time, and it probably wouldn't be absurd to say the salamander is around 20 years old. Um, definitely, it wouldn't be absurd to say it's a 10-year-old salamander. Even a lot of the smaller salamanders, like marbles, can live to be uh, in excess of 10 years, which is really crazy to me. That something this small... And really, this sensitive can live that long. But you can see this guy has some scarring on him. That is probably from fighting with other red salamanders. We're getting into red salamander breeding season where these guys are going to be fighting each other. The males will fight for the females. So really cool little salamanders. And this one is, well, he's not the best looking. He's super cool. And it's always nice to see a big, gigantic, chunky adult like that. Really awesome. Two red salamanders today. So one really cool thing about this guy, if he'll show us, is he's got, let's see if he'll crawl up on my hand here. Come on, there you go. Look at that toe. His front foot is all beat up. He's only got two toes. Really cool. All right, buddy, we'll put you back under your log. What a cool salamander. All right, everyone, I'm back at the car. It does not look like we're gonna be finding any more snakes today, unfortunately. Um, it's starting to get a little bit late and it's cooling off. There's a gnarly cold front coming in behind the rain that's coming in tonight. Uh, but unfortunately, it doesn't look like the rain's going to hit this area in a, in a way that's going to make it worth sticking around to look for salamanders tonight. So uh, I'm probably going to call it a day here and try to get out this weekend. I'm actually planning on camping this weekend down in the sand hills and looking for diamondbacks. So I'm probably going to head home at this point and I will see you guys probably tomorrow afternoon when I get down to camp. This is my first time doing this. It's really cold this morning, so I'm sitting up here in a tree stand watching for deer. And then when it warms up a little bit and starts to get towards midday, I'm going to be herping, so uh, I guess I'll be seeing you guys here in a little bit when it warms up.
All right, everyone, I am down from my stand. Saw a couple deer this morning and a uh, nice little fox squirrel that came running right up my tree. It was really cool. I got it on video. Um, I shot it vertically because I wasn't thinking, so I'm, I'm definitely gonna post it as a short, but I'll probably throw it in the video here just so y'all can see it too, because it was really cool. But yeah, it's warming up nicely. You can see the sun's coming through the canopy pretty well. So I'm gonna go walk around and see if I can turn up anything. Here in the sand hills, the big thing I'd want to see on a day like today would be an eastern diamondback. So they tend to be pretty cold weather active out here. So I'm going to walk around for a little bit and see what I can turn up. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here is our first herp of the day. A nice little southern two-line salamander. This guy is actually really unique looking, actually. He kind of resembles the... Uh, Sandhills Eurysia up in North Carolina a little bit. But we do not have those here, so that basically has to be a weird looking two line. Very cool. So I think I mentioned it earlier, but today is quite cold. The high is only like 52 or something like that. So not super high chances of seeing snakes today. So I'm mostly probably going to be walking around flipping logs, hoping to see salamanders and poking around go for tortoise burrows see if there's any diamondbacks coiled up outside a couple nice logs here on the edge of this lake to flip for salamanders but there's a little southern cricket frog right there not looking super colorful today with the cold weather but uh not a species we see terribly often on the channel because we don't live in range so I doubt I've showed too many of these guys over the years, even though they are quite common. So we're just gonna leave them to it. I'm gonna flip these logs right here. Well, no salamanders or anything, but there's a pretty cool looking little fishing spider. No idea what kind it is, but he's neat looking. Get you out of there so I can put your log back. Go on. <laughs> All right, guys, just flipped our next herp of the day along this little creek. This is a nice little southern red salamander. I think this is the first one of my videos where we've seen both red salamander species in the same episode. So for whatever reason, probably the types of trees that are down here in this area, I'm having a really hard time finding logs to flip. And that seems to be the case in a lot of the coastal plain. Some of these kind of black water areas like this just get a lot of these spindly thin trees that are super uh, flood tolerant. They don't die when they get flooded much so you don't get a lot of dead branches on the ground but either way very nice little southern red salamander really the only feature that distinguishes these guys from their northern cousins is the overall darker tone to them very very rarely will you see a southern red salamander with that super vibrant coloration and definitely not a fully grown adult this is his log right here. As you can see, it's basically the only one in this little area. So make sure he goes back to it. There you go, buddy. There's another one over there. I'm going to go flip. Actually, I'll record it. We'll see if there's anybody under it. These haven't been here terribly long for some recent construction, but you see that's still got grass under it. No salamanders. All right, here's another prime southern red salamander log kind of next to this creek. A couple of smaller pieces. And nobody under that one. I've only seen two salamanders today. A red and a two-line. Good morning, everyone. It's the next day, and I'm back at it again. We've been walking around checking tortoise burrows. Haven't seen any snakes. We did see a tortoise, but he was down in there and we didn't want to mess with him. Trying to find some more logs to flip out here. I really want to see a mud salamander in this area. And this is a pretty good looking area for him. It's just hard to find a good log. There are all these crumbly ones that don't flip very well. well there's old reliable Southern two line salamander. He was under this log. I'm gonna put him back real quick. There you go, buddy. That's a big boy. You can see he's got some danglies. Come on. There you go. Nobody under that one. 
And there is yet another two line salamander. I'm not gonna mess with that one. Just put his log back. Plenty of those out here, as it would turn out. And there's yet another one. Very nice. These guys definitely do look a little bit different from the ones we see back home. It's kind of interesting. There's something a little different. That is a Hillis's dwarf salamander. Not a species we've seen too many of on the channel. And this is my first one from this area. Really cool. So these guys are Eurecia, which means they're closely related to the two-line salamanders, three-line salamanders, etc. And uh, on, on the surface, they look pretty similar, but if I put my hand down next to it, you can see that's a full-grown adult. They're about a half to maybe a quarter of the mass of a normal-sized two-line salamander, and that's a full-grown adult. Really cool. So I'm just gonna leave that guy to it. They tend to like areas like this. I was honestly expecting to see more of those than two-line salamanders down here. Because they really like this kind of low sphagnum bog type habitat. But yeah, really neat. All right, they don't make logs much better than this. So we don't see something under one of these. Actually, this one's kind of on top. How is there nothing under there? That is just ridiculous. Let's check it. Oh, there's a little two line. Pretty little two line. There you go, right there. Very nice. All right, looks like this one's gonna flip. It looks pretty prime. Another two line. Look at that. Good numbers of salamanders down here, at least. It's the first place I've really managed to find in this area that seems to at least have a lot of salamanders. And here's another little dwarf salamander. Well, there was one. There you go. There he is. There is another little dwarf salamander. See if I can. I'm gonna have to move this guy to put his log back either way. But you can see it's about the same size as that last one, and they don't get too much bigger than that. Really cool. All right, we found some tin. I'm not sure if it's gonna flip or not because I think it's gonna be pretty heavy, but we're gonna try. Well, nothing under it, but it's nice to know it's here, maybe in the warmer months. So, this is not something you see every day. This is a nice outcrop, a rock outcrop here in the sandhill habitat that I thought looked pretty good for snakes. We haven't seen any evidence of snakes this weekend, but this looks like as good a place as any. Look at this. This is the coastal plain, and there's just a gigantic rock bluff. All right, everyone. Well, I'm back home. We didn't see too much else in the sand hills. Um, unfortunately, it was a little bit cooler than I was hoping it was going to be. But we did manage to turn up some cool salamanders and have a pretty relaxing weekend in the woods overall. I spent a lot of time in a tree stand looking at wildlife, watching birds and deer, etc. So it was a fun weekend, even if a lot of that was done off camera. But uh, I think I do have enough to wrap up this video here. We've got some pretty gnarly cold weather coming in next week, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make a video next week. Um, but I am one week ahead, so I should be able to at least scrounge something together. But hopefully the weather will turn around once we uh, get towards the end of the week and there will be some days where I can get out. For some context, it's the week of Thanksgiving coming up, so it's getting definitely getting a little late in the year uh, for snakes to be readily available to be found. So we kind of have to cherry pick the best days and get out on those. So, so yeah, I'm going to wrap this one up here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next episode.